to go over this criminal complaint with this whole situation with Paul Pelosi and I like to call him uh, Pepe Le Pew, you know, that skunk cartoon. Every time I see his last name, that's what I think of. But I mean, after reading this, you know, I had questions before, and that's not even going with all the crap that's being passed around on social media. But after reading this, you know, it brings up even more questions. You would think an you know, agency like the FBI would be, would write a good complaint, or they purposely left this vague, so maybe they can kind of push it, push the uh, narrative, I guess, the way they want it to go. I don't know. I just... There is not very much detail in this thing at all, like specific details, which I find odd because usually these, you know, especially when you get into the, you know, what happened, you go into a lot of detail, all the details you know, and this one really don't. It's, it's, it's so vague. I don't know. Anyways, he's been charged with assault on an immediate family member of a federal official and attempted kidnapping of a federal official. So, I, introduction, we're just going to skip all this. Here's the background of the agent that wrote it. Uh, let's see, been FBI agent, FBI agent since 2019. Uh, currently signed to the San Francisco field office. Specializes in investigations of domestic terrorism. I primarily investigate United States persons who commit violent crime acts in furtherance of their political or social ideology. I have participated in several investigations of individuals that commit crimes and acts to furtherance, furtherance of their ideological goals to all oh, they put this in there to include militia violent extremists. You gotta put that dangerous MVE in there, you know. Let's see, com successfully completed a training, 21 week new agent training at the Academy in Virginia. Uh, during the time, I received training in physical surveillance, legal, legal statutes and procedures, confidential source management, and electronic surveillance techniques. I've also assisted with the execution of search warrants with numerous domestic terrorism investigations. How many, how many investigations do you think that, did, that were tied to uh, January 6th? I you don't know, really wonder, but two years? I think I would think they would have somebody that would have more, you know, training or experience, let's say. But, hell, I don't know. What's the government? Right, these are statutes he's being charged with. Okay, here's the probable cause. This is this where it gets kind of you know interesting, I guess. This is what just makes me have some questions, more questions, I guess. Let's hear October twenty eighth at two twenty three a.m. Uh, San Francisco dispatch received. Dispatch, dispatch, if I can say it, received a 911 call from Paul Pelosi, located in the Pelosi's residence in San Francisco, California. Pelosi stated to the words, stated words to the effect of, see, Pelosi stated words to the effect of, see, usually they, if, if you do a 911 call and, you know, they're recorded, Usually you kind of put what was stated in that call, not stated words to the effect of. I, I just find that very odd. Usually you kind of, you want to include everything that was stated during the 911 call, not, you know, stating that. This, he said different words, but this is what he meant, I guess you could be saying. There's a male in the home, and the male is going to wait for Pelosi's wife. 
His his plosive father father conveyed that he does does not know who the male is, and the male said his name is David. Okay, so the male said his name is David. There was reports that Pelosi said that his name was David, which originally I've seen. All right, 231. So they got to call it 223, 231. I bet you I was quick to serve here we in San Francisco, I bet you. Okay, SFPD officer responded to the Pelosi residence. Uh, he knocked on, knocked on the front door. You get a husband of a federal elected official calling 911. Stating that there's a male in this house that he does not know. And the male is going to wait for Pelosi's wife. And then also you would heard the male in the background said his name is David. So you would have known there was somebody there. And the first, your first thought is to go up and knock on the door. And I think they'd be, I would think they'd be kicking the door in at that time. I mean, we've seen doors kicking a lot less. Wow. These SFPD officers are really, really nice and respectful, I guess. They just went and knocked on the door. Okay, when the door was opened... See, my question there was who opened the door, but they do later on get who opened the door. Well, who is alleged to open the door, I have to say. Uh, when the door was open, Pelosi and Mr. Papa... Papa... We're hold, both holding a hammer with one hand, and Pape had one other hand holding on to Pelosi's forearm. So it sounds like they were, from that statement, I would get they were fighting over the hammer. And Pelosi greeted the officers? Really? Some dude trying to take you out with a hammer, and you're just like, Hello, how's your night going? Officers ask them what's going on? Man. This has got to be made up. Uh, the Pepe responded that everything was good. Okay. <laughs> you walk in the house, you see two dudes fighting over a hammer. And you're going to ask what, what's going on? What do you think they were fighting over who was going to pound a pound nail on the wall, or... I don't know. Officers then asked Pelosi and Pepe to drop the hammer. So, Pepe pulled the hammer from Pelosi's hand, swinging the hammer, striking Pelosi in the head. So... Probably what happened is the officer stated for them to drop the hammer, and Paul left go of the hammer, which left Mr. Pepe Le Pew there a opening for a, let's call it a free swing, I guess, to, you know, commit harm on somebody, I guess. I just, I just don't get why they were knocking at the door and... You know, ask what's going on. Officers immediately went inside and was able to restrain Pabe. While officers were restraining him, Pelosi appeared to be unconscious on the ground. Officers removed the cell phone, cash, clipper cards, and an unidentified card from the Pepe's right shorts pocket. Oh, wow, he even provided officers his first last name. He's, he's really, you know... It's really nice to them police officers. And after officers asked the Pepe if he had ID on him, he said it might be in his backpack on the back porch and later stated his backpack was near the broken glass. Okay. So... Oh, I, okay, they get what's in... The backpack, okay. When officers moved the Pepe from Pelosi's residence, the police body cam wore camera footage body, police body worn camera footage, I can say. 
showed a glass door that appeared to be laminated glass broken near the door handle. And we all seen that picture that is being circulated around, you know, there's glass on the outside and if it was if it was laminated glass it probably it would it's like glass that you would have in your your windshield on on your car that you know when it cracks it doesn't just you know shatter it kind of gets some cracks and them crystals start coming off so there was a pile of crystals of you know crystal glass on the outside but you from the way the picture was taken you really couldn't see the inside of the house because it was it was shadowed so I don't know how much was an inside. Um, people were saying because there's glass on the outside, it was broken outwards. It could have been he had to hit it, you know, so many times with the hammer that it just it it flakes and crystallizes, and that may be how it got on the outside. Without seeing the inside, that's the only thing I can say. And then it. it was broken glass under the door handle. Now this wasn't no little hole. This was. You know, a fair, fairly sized hole that, you know, a small kid probably could have climbed through, if not maybe somebody. They wrote this up, I like, it's, it's just like somebody knocked the glass out a little bit, made a little hole, reached their hand in there, and opened the, the door handle. Alright, so they recovered zip ties. In the bedroom and hallway near the front door of Pelosi's residence. In addition, law enforcement searched... The puppy's backpack, the pussy's resistance, and found, among other things, a roll of tape. See, they don't go into the details here. What kind of tape? Duct tape, scotch tape, masking tape. You know, the, the, the details should be put in a report like this, but, you know, a white rope. What kind of a white rope? You know, how thick was it? Was it a thick white rope? Was it a thin white rope? One hammer, so he had two hammers if he had one in the house and one in his backpack let's see a pair of rubber gloves again what kind of gloves the thick gloves you wear like when you're cleaning or something or were they like the hospital surgical you know just rubber gloves also cloth gloves again what kind gardening gloves you know in a journal Again, you know, was his name in the journal? Was it signed by him? Just kind of little things that I would think it would be put into a port by any other, you know, agency, but this is the government, so they can, you know, just twist stuff the way they wanted to, I guess. Okay, let's listen to witness statements. All right, the officer interviewed witness one, witness one who saw an individual in all black carrying a large black bag on his back, walking near the police's residence where witness one was parked. Witness one was working a private security at an address nearby. Witness one then heard what sounded like banging on either door or car and then heard siren within a minute or two. Okay, witness one. I don't know how often, you know, people dressed in all black and carrying a large black book bag on his back walk around at 2.30 in the morning. I don't know how many that, you know, how often that happens in San Francisco. But if I was working, you know, security somewhere, that probably would kind of, you know, pique my interest a little bit maybe. Then he heard what sounded like banging on either door or car, and they heard sirens within a minute or two. See, but that don't, that don't, it, well, his statement don't line up. Because according to this, uh, he received a call at 223 and 911, so it means the dude was already in there. He would have already broke the window. And officers got there at 2.31. And this dude said there was only 
sirens within a minute or two. I don't know, just something to point out. Let's see, Pelosi was interviewed by the officer in Amon storing to transport to San Francisco General Hospital. He's, Pelosi said he'd never seen Papa Abe before. Pelosi was asleep when he came into Pelosi's bedroom and stated he wanted to talk to Nancy. When Pelosi told him that Nancy was not there, Mr. Pape Le Pew stated that he would sit and wait. Uh, Pelosi stated his wife would not be home for several days, and then Pape reiterated that he would wait. Pelosi was able to go to the in to the bathroom, which was which was when he was able to call nine one one. Well, she stated that when officers arrived, that was when they struck him with the hammer. Yeah, because he left go of the hammer, because officers were saying, you know, comply, let go of the hammer. And when he let go of it, he just gave the guy a free swing to smash him in the head. Let's see here. Subsequent interviews with law enforcement officials. Um... But he had the hammer with him during the events described above the Pelosi's residence. Further, the hammer did not belong to the Pelosi family. All right. All right, what's this? This is the interview. This would be a probably a taped interview, I would imagine. Yeah, recorded interview. Oh, well, maybe it might be video recorded. Probably video. Um, by the San Francisco Police Department. Okay, let's see here. Uh, stated... Mr. Pape stated he was going to hold Nancy hostage and talk to her. If, if Nancy was to tell him the truth, he would let her go, and if she lied, he, would, he was going to break her kneecaps. Pape was certain that Nancy would not have told the truth in the course of the interview. Pepe articulated that he viewed Nancy as the leader of the pack of lies told by the Democratic Party. Uh, Pepe also later explained that by breaking Nancy's kneecap, she would then have to be wheeled into Congress, which would show other members of Congress that cons there were consequences to actions. Pepe also, also, explain, also explained generally that he wanted to use Nancy to lure other individuals into individuals to him. Okay. I see here. He stated he broke the glass into the house through the glass he broke into the house through the glass door, which was a difficult task and required the use of a hammer. Uh he said that Pelosi was in bed and appeared surprised. Well, you would think, you know, somebody waking up in the middle of 2.30 in the morning. Uh, he told Pelosi to wake up. And he told Pelosi he was looking for Nancy. Pelosi responded that she was not present. Pelosi asked how they could resolve the situation. What the hell? And what? Uh, Pepe wanted to do. Pepe stated he wanted to tie up Pelosi so that he could get some, he could get he could go to sleep because he was tired from having to carry a backpack <laughs> to the residence. <laughs> so I'm thinking this dude don't do much physical training. Um. He's carrying a backpack with, well, we'll, we'll say two hammers, um, tape, gloves, <laughs> rope, <laughs> and he's tired. He wants to take a nap from carrying it. Okay, around this time, according Mr. Le Pew, um, stated he's stated taking out twist ties from his pocket pocket so that he could restrain Pelosi. Pelosi moved towards another part of the house, but Pepe stopped him and together they went back into the bedroom. While talking with each other, Pelosi went to the bathroom where Pelosi grabbed the phone to call 911. Uh, Pepe felt, stated he felt like Pelosi's actions compelled him to respond. So 
wait a second, this dude broke into your house and stated that, you know, he wanted to tie, stated he wanted to tie Pelosi up so that he could go to sleep, but yet he let you go into the bathroom to call 911. Uh, Pepe remembered there was no way the police were going to forget about the phone call. <laughs> yeah, they, they came up and knocked on the door and asked what was going on. <laughs> Do they get many calls from this residence, maybe? Maybe that's why? Maybe they just get a whole bunch of weird calls. Maybe like some drunk dialing or something and they just learned just to go up and knock on the door and ask what's going on, I guess. Uh, he explained he did not leave after Pelosi's call to 911 because much like the American founding fathers with, with the British, he was fighting against tyranny without, without the option of surrender. Uh, Pepe reiterated this sentiment elsewhere in an interview. So he compared himself to the founding fathers standing up against the British. I don't know. This dude is crazy they say he is, or they really good at writing this. I don't know. Let's see here. He stated that they went downstairs to the front door. The police arrived and knocked on the door. Pelosi ran over to open it. Okay, then Pelosi grabbed the hammer, which was in his hand. At that point in the interview, the Pepe stated that he didn't plan to surrender, that he would go through Pelosi. Man, I got so many questions. Okay, this is, you know he called 911. Obviously, you, you know, had the mindset the police weren't going to, you know, forget about the call. But then you go downstairs, you let him go over and open the door, and then he grabs your hammer, you have his other hand, and then please tell to drop the hammer, and Pelosi lets go of it, and Mr. LePew gets a free swing, okay? Uh, Pepe stated that he pulled the hammer away from Pelosi and swung the hammer towards Pelosi. I explained that Pelosi's actions resulted in Pelosi taking the punishment instead. I don't know, guys. They just released cameras, you know, make it a whole lot easier, but I don't think we're ever going to see that. All right, let's see what they found at his residence. Oh, he lived in a garage? On Shasta Street in Richmond, California. Uh, by interviewing the owner of the premises, you confirmed that Pepe has resided in the garage for approximately two years. Uh, October 29th, he searched the residence with a search warrant. They found two more hammers? So, yeah, so this dude goes and was it like buy two get two free wow so they see two hammers a sword again you know maybe be a little bit more destructive what kind of sword and some more gloves you know a pair of rubber and cloth gloves Uh, agents also found evidence that he lived in the garage, including DMV paperwork, IRS letters, and PayPal credit cards. Well, see that? Uh, IRS was after his ass. Based on the information, there's probably cause to believe it. To believe David, Mr. Le Pew, intentionally insulted Pelosi in violation of blah, 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 blah. And attempting to kidnap Speaker Pelosi... Nancy Pelosi in violation of blah, 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 blah. 
Okay. okay. Well, well, that is the criminal complaint. complaint. Um, like, like I said, said reading through this, it, it just... There is, you know, I, I know it's an ongoing investigation, but there's just so many things that, like the, you know, the, what was in his backpack, like, you know, it should have been put in or what kind of tape, you know, you know, what kind, well, you know, how thick was the rope? Was it to tie somebody up? Was it like a shoelace type thing? You know, what, what kind of rubber gloves, gloves, what kind of cloth gloves, gloves and, you know, well, I guess the journal, they really wouldn't have to uh, expand on that too much. That would be like a evidence item, I guess, but it just, it just does not go into detail very much, and it just makes you think. And then just the way the events happened is... I don't know. Like I, said, I don't know what the, you know, physical, like the mental mindset of, you know, Mr. Pelosi is, so. But I would think if you woke up and somebody was in your house, obviously he, he had the hammer, you know, I, I would think it would be just an, well, for most people, it would be just an all-out fight to... You know, for your life, you would think. I don't know. I don't know what his mental mindset is, so. We you know he likes uh, DUIs, and maybe there's a lot of drunk dialing going on at that place. Maybe that's why they knocked on the door. I like to see video. All right. I just wanted to cover this real quick. Like I said, it gives more... You have, you have more questions, questions after reading this than you do answers, but I guess we'll just see you know, how it goes. I don't think we'll ever see no video from it. If so, it'll be uh, just cut, small cut pieces. I don't think we'll see a full video because you have you had the, you know, the Capitol Police. Well, they had a camera at the resident residence, and but nobody was monitoring it. And they didn't realize until after they seen the police lights that something was going on. So they rewinded the tape and they said they caught, you know, they've seen him breaking into the house. But yeah, they're going to come out and say, you know, we need more government. Because we didn't have enough people to watch that camera. I don't know. I don't, I don't think, think we'll ever see any footage. Like I said, if we do, it's going to be cut up footage. They're just going to release what they want us to see. You know, maybe this guy was batshit crazy, you know. And, you know, wasn't a very smart criminal, I'll tell you that. But it's just... There is so many, you know, open-ended questions. But I'm not the FBI, so I guess they're allowed to have open questions because this criminal complaint would, I think, I would think whoever would, you know, proofread this criminal complaint, if this was not a federal agency, would have, you know, said something about you know, you you should include, you know, what kind of tape, you know, just the more facts, the better when you put into a, you know, probable cause complaint. But this one's just, it's just so vague that... All right, well, I just wanted to cover that real quick. I don't know what's going on at this house, but... Move to San Francisco, guys. The police officers are there are really nice, and they were knocking on your door and ask you what's going on, even though somebody's you know has a hammer, and obviously you guys are fighting over the hammer. All right, I'm done.